Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Wanted to share some things with you guys here that we are seeing uh, as we get started here with the news. Things very interesting, and one of these here happens to be in Sweden. I want to share this video here with you. Um, this happened recently there. Uh, on an island uh, outside of Sweden there. And what you're going to see... Uh, just another one of their uh, missile systems, uh, defense missile missile systems there, uh, defense offensive type missile system there that has been set up uh, on an island there because, as they are saying, they're getting very nervous about what's going on um, with Russia. Of course, and again, it's just really odd how that everybody seems to be worried about what's Russia doing? What's Russia doing? I don't think Russia is really as much of the problem as they say they are. But nonetheless, all of NATO is gearing up as if there's going to be some massive war done with NATO in the very near future. All right? And so, let me get this side here stopped. It wants to keep going off there. Anyway, it says, Sweden brings back Cold War weapons to deter Kremlin. According to the Times, this is on the uh, uh, Unian Information Agency, faced with uh, newly aggressive Russia, Sweden is taking mothballed Cold War missile launchers out of storage in museums to shore up the defenses on its Baltic Sea front line, according to the Times. We're talking about as they say here, weapon systems that were in museums. It doesn't look like it's that old of a system to me, if you ask me, but nonetheless, it's what they're claiming it is. Uh, Land-based uh, Crostro Bota Battery 90 is what that particular system is being called. I don't know, but it's very interesting to, to see all the different things that are being done in and around uh, the world by NATO and their allies and how they're beefing up. And of course, this particular story here on RT Today really is, uh, this is definitely going to infuriate the United States, Japan, no doubt as well. Russia deploys newest anti-ship missiles to the Kuril Islands. Those of you that know anything about the Kuril Islands, the Kuril Islands are actually right there, just barely to the north of Japan. It says the Russian Pacific Fleet uh, has installed batteries of anti-ship missiles at its bases in the Kuril Islands, ensuring effective protection from land operations and carrier-based uh, aircraft strikes. Very, very um, Serious action there. I mean, I understand why Russia would do it personally. I mean, they're they are concerned about um, Next thing you know on their eastern uh, coast forget forget about the fact that NATO has or NATO is building up 300,000 uh, soldiers and with, with, with tanks and every type of armament you can think of on Russia's western border but now Russia is beefing up concerned about uh, amphibious assault landing ships landing on their eastern border there and doing an attack uh, on Russia from the east. So the Russian Pacific Fleet uh, has installed these batteries on the Kuril Islands which is a disputed island to begin with uh, for, for uh, Russia and Japan. Uh, something, though, that President Putin has been trying to, to come to an agreement with on Japan here in recent months uh, anyway. Another interesting thing here is uh, from Reuters, exclusive Russian tankers defy EU ban to smuggle jet fuel to Syria, according to sources here. I thought that was rather interesting there. I had no idea that... that um, that according to an agreement done by the European Union, Russia is not even allowed to move uh, tankers that carry jet fuel through any of the EU waters. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty bad, you know. I mean, they're just totally cutting Russia off from the entire world. It is really, really strange the things that we're seeing going on here. But Russia did manage between in the months of September and October to bring two tankers. Uh, all the way to the port in Syria there with jet fuel to continue the mission that they're doing. Uh, it's really, it's a boycott is what it is. NATO is trying to boycott Russia in any way they can, can when they came through with their flotilla of eight ships. NATO refused them to be able to dock or port anywhere in NATO territory. Spain did allow them but was quickly 
ostracized by by NATO and the West there. Um, and, and this comes down to a, it is a major New World Order agenda without, without even question, if you, if you ask me. Um, you know, also the UN chemical watchdog refuses to send experts to Aleppo under Western pressure, according to uh, President Lavrov. And here's the article on that right here. Uh, it, it has been reported on several occasions already that the... Um, U.S.-backed rebels, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, they all have been using chemical weapons on the citizens in western Aleppo. Now, when there was a big to-do over uh, Assad supposedly using chemical weapons on its own citizens, uh, real quick light, there were inspectors sent to Syria to determine what type of gas was being used. Of course, we found out later from Aaron Erdem who was a parliament member of Turkey that brought the, the, the records forth showing that those chemical weapons that were used in Syria were actually done by ISIS, smuggled through the Turkish border, and as he stated, it could not have been done without uh, Western allies knowing that it was being done through Turkey. And from one of our own sources that we have, uh, very close to people inside of Turkey that stated to us that Erdogan was promised a great deal inside the New World Order if he did the dirty work for the United States. So it seems like Erdogan has been a very busy man. But anyway, at this point here, the UN chemical watchdog has refused to send the experts to Aleppo on these gas attacks. And of course, it might be good to note as well, Vanessa Beatley has reported, she's an independent journalist, and she has uh, clearly reported that indeed, uh, the chemical weapons factory inside of Syria is under the control of the U.S.-backed uh, rebels. So it's not it's not uh, Bashar al-Assad making these chemical weapons. And I know that there are some out there that are trying to say, oh, Bashar al-Assad is still making chemical weapons. Well, they're definitely still being made in Syria. And I agree with that, but it's not by Bashar al-Assad. It happens to be by, be by those... U.S.-backed rebels inside of Syria, they're the ones that are controlling the chemical factory and are able to produce these weapons and are using them on uh, once again on the civilian population uh, in western Aleppo. Uh, the, uh, anyway, goes on to say the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons refuses to send its experts to Aleppo to check substances used by rebels in attacks. The move was seemingly done under pressure from our Western colleagues, Russian for, uh, Foreign Minister said. That's Minister, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, that is. Anyway, the Russian specialist found that militants in eastern Aleppo used ammunition with poisonous substances with the ammo targeting West Aleppo. The collected samples leave no doubt that it is a toxic agent, Sergei Lavrov said in a press conference with his uh, Belarusian counterpart in Minsk, as cited by the Interfax News Agency. Uh, moving on over here to conclude our broadcast here for this evening is uh, on Fukushima. Um, now, I reported just in a quick take earlier there that uh, 7.3 earthquake, as we know, that happened just the other day. Uh, and I was, from one report, it looked like that it had been a 7.4 aftershock. But I actually believe that what that was that I was seeing is that it was uh, just a differing of, difference of opinion on what the initial earthquake was. Uh, I noticed that, and the reason why I caught that was because this aftershock that they had today, the 5.7, uh, one group says it's 5.7, another says it's a 5.2, uh, and they also differ on the depth of it. One says uh, 30 uh, uh, miles deep, the other one's are kilometers deep, the other one is saying 10 kilometers deep uh, inside the Earth's crust. Uh, nonetheless, as those of you already know, there was a tsunami uh, about three meters high, close to nine foot in height, that did uh, sweep ashore uh, near uh, around Fukushima. Um, and of course, you know, the damage uh, from a 7.3 was, was, was pretty bad. Nothing like that of New Zealand's earthquake. Uh, New Zealand has definitely uh, saw some images of that today of the huge cracks in the Earth's crust there in New Zealand in the mountains of New Zealand. Very, very uh, tremendous quake itself. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Do keep in mind we are having some internet difficulty we, uh, where we're at right now. We had to do some traveling for uh, personal issues that we have to take care of on our paperwork here. So 
We have been on the road and we'll be back soon. And I'm going to go back, once I get back, the interview I did with Dr. Pigeon there, I will get that redone. I finally figured out a way that I can actually capture the image where I'm in the interview with him uh, that we'll be able to get that up for you. Hopefully this coming weekend we can put that up there with the audio enhanced and get this all better. We're, you know, guys, we're, we're dealing with hacks that have been going on uh, in our ministry here. We've, we've been hit. They're our main computer, we use a very old camera that's our secondary camera. It still uses the, the old uh, little disc in there that, that, you know, that you record. Not, not, not disc, but like a, like a VCR tape, but a little mini tape that we were using for that. Pretty outdated, and we only have one computer that we can upload this image into, and they have attacked that computer. So we're, we're going to have to replace the computer as well. We do need to replace this camera to where we have two cameras that are both using the memory sticks instead. We have one Sony, uh, so we do need to take care of that. Uh, and with that in mind, if God lays it on your heart to try to help with these endeavors that we're dealing with, plus we are moving our office, our our time is up where we live at, so we have to move, and we don't have a big enough place to put our office in, in our in the next house we'll be um, leasing. So anyway, if God lays it on your heart, you'd like to be a part and help this work that we're doing here, uh, visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I'll leave a link in the attachment. You can also go to IsraelReturns.com. Uh, and also on IsraelReturns.com, there is a place there where you can see if you prefer to do this by mail, you can send it uh, in the Czech Republic uh, in Prague at P.O. Box 46. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and have a great day.